readily acknowledge I've fried up an awful lot of sacred cows lately. It's not something that's intentional. We don't go after high-profile targets simply to make people mad or stir up controversy. It just so happens that the video game industry is in a really bad place right now, and heading to an even worse place if the trailer for Dragon Age 2 is any indication. Making good games isn't much of a priority, but catching in on familiar brand names most certainly is. I liken the situation to Coca-Cola randomly changing their formula to urine. Oh, you'd think people would immediately spit their coke out and demand a refund, but then there are those people who collect vintage coke machines, who have every conceivable coke-related collectible lining the walls of their cat-infested fortress of solitude. They will drink the piss and like it, and the company that generated the urinary beverage knows this. When that happens, you end up with seismic-scale disappointments like Final Fantasy 13 and 14, or Street Fighter 4. In short, if Halo Reach was a bad game, I would tell you. But it isn't. Modern Warfare 2 was a bad game, that's why I told you it was bad. The game relied on the tired formula of defend the objective while waves of Russians inexplicably spawn just out of radar range far too often, and when it wasn't doing that, it was cramming some flashy first-person set-piece moment down your throat, a syndrome that is certainly getting the fuck around in today's gaming market. It's nice that a game's modelers and texturers spend nine hours rendering every screw in my Kalashnikov, but how's about putting some of that effort into creating a setting story and playstyle that don't make me want to crush a puppy's skull? But Halo Reach, honestly, it's not a bad game. I'm not calling it Game of the Year, mind you. It's certainly swimming in an ocean of tired FPS cliches without any floaties, and that is a bad thing. But this go-around, the devs at Bungie seem to be aware of this fact, and so they highlight other, more interesting aspects of Halo gameplay to compensate. For example, one of the few truly interesting things about the Halo series for me has always been these extended vehicular sequences, where you take the driver's seat and a friend gets on the gunner turret, and the gameplay, for a moment, legitimately revolves around... <gasps> actual teamwork! What results are some legitimately fun, albeit completely linear, moments that are absolutely worth playing at least once. Of course, calling these sequences linear fails to speak to the vague bullshit you'll be confronted with concerning specific objectives you must complete and locations you have to visit in order to move the game forward. This game has one of the wonkiest, most unintuitive waypoint systems my eyes have ever beheld. Sometimes you'll be casually following the marker, then once you reach it, it disappears, and you're expected to develop impromptu telepathy and guessing what in a rough fuck you're supposed to be doing next. You want to talk about innovation? There's an innovation I'd like to see. You motherless fuckers want to form a circle jerk over dithering, bloom, gimmicky motion control devices and polygon counts? How's about telling the player what the fuck is required of them to advance a story? That's the exchange you have to make for fashioning one of the most linear, quasi-plagiaristic, by-the-numbers FPS games you could possibly spend five minutes thinking up the story to. If the game is going to be a straight line with a beginning, middle, and end, then at least take the time to hold our hands and explain what spectacularly convoluted objective we have to complete next, because I own fucking mood rings that are more specific and helpful than an objective screen that just says complete the mission. Seriously, what in Master Chief fondling fuck is that supposed to mean? That's like if Super Mario Brothers had an objective screen that just said, beat the game. That's what I'm doing, you equivocating bungee shit heels. What? Did you think I turned my console on just because I needed some ambient white noise while I work on my goddamn thesis? There is nothing, I repeat, fucking nothing worse than when a game has some ridiculously specific goal that you need to complete but refuses to tell you what it is. Glitches, hackneyed plots, unresponsive controls, an EA logo in the bottom right hand corner I can all deal with. But not being told what I have to do next? For that, I'd like nothing more than to watch Bill Gates keister a live grenade. Actually, I'd like to see the assholes at Prima Strategy Guides and Brady Games eat a razor blade and barbed wire salad with a pair of chainsaws as eating utensils, because they're the ones to blame for all this. That's why, despite expensive focus groups and countless hours of testing, video games still have at least one scenario in every game where you basically have to consult a strategy guide in order to progress. I mean, goddamn what a scam! That's like if... Oh, I don't know. The same people that were manufacturing 3D televisions also happen to own the movie studios that are releasing the 3D movies. Something crazy like that. <clears throat> Moving on. 
The gameplay beyond that isn't anything to write home about. One of the bigger changes is the addition of a run button, a common sense addition which is basically snatched from every other modern military shooter in existence. I just find it hilarious that it took the video game industry this long to arrive at the conclusion that a soldier in the middle of a war zone might at some point develop a desire to fucking run! It really speaks to the FPS developer's chasm-like nebulous black hole of creativity that it took them nearly 20 fucking years to formulate that concept. Slow down there, Copernicus. At this rate, you'll add the ability to see the character's legs sometime in the 22nd century, just in time for Halo to be real life. If there's one thing I can't stand in this world, it's people who get paid to be creative failing to do so. For every vapid suit in some Seattle video game studio cranking out yet another by-the-number shooter featuring a protagonist in a helmet and or buzz cut espousing lethal weapon one-liners if he talks at all, there's a starving artist somewhere in the modding community putting together something legitimately creative and getting paid fuck all for it. What's wrong with this picture? Fans of the magnificent HBO series The Wire, like myself, will find themselves constantly distracted by the fact that one of your closest allies in the game is also the most vicious drug-slinging kingpin in West Baltimore. It goes without saying, then, that the game's voice acting is well above average. Although upon further review, Bungie has assembled more ethnic stereotypes in one place than the cast of Street Fighter IV. You've got the Latino chick who also happens to be good with gadgets, the Australian-slash-German guy who's big and strong, the Asian guy who makes up for his ring-pop penis with a sniper rifle roughly the length of the Great Wall, the African-American dude who is more smooth than Stefan or Kel. Wait, wait a minute. This is starting to sound familiar. Well, well, they are defending a planet from a bad guy who wants to loot and plunder. And they are all from different corners of the globe. And the South American character was completely useless in both instances. Sweet ninja cowboy Jesus. In Halo Reach, you play as the fucking Planeteers. The power is yours! Now, the whole story is draped in a thick cloak of inevitability and dread. From the very first moment you meet all the main characters, you know they're all dead men. And they do it all without having to utter the phrase suicide mission 50 fucking times Mass Effect 2. That's right, folks, I just proved that Halo Reach possesses more narrative subtlety than the second Mass Effect. If that doesn't show how far the Mass Effect series has fallen over the span of just two games, I don't know what does. Probably my favorite addition to the series is the unveiling of a space combat component to the series. Maybe it's because I have a foot-long throbbing erection for the Wing Commander series, but I absolutely love this segment. Granted, it wasn't anything to write home about, and it was eerily familiar to something I just can't quite put my finger on. Let you do that, but hey, maybe it's just the fact that space shooters and simulator games of all kinds have been dead for so long, replaced by an onslaught of military shooters, Final Fantasy sequels, and other assorted casualized console claptrap. So, in summation, I honestly can't complain much about Halo Reach. It's a decent shooter that's a lot more fun when you don't have a gun in your hands. I mean, I'm not just going to be a typical elitist shitheel and tell you it's a bad game, simply because it's got a Halo brand slapped on the top of it. It's not likely to cure cancer anytime soon, but as a fun game you can play for a weekend, have some fun with the multiplayer, beats the hell out of Modern Warfare 2, that's all I'm saying. I'm Razor Fist. God. Fucking speed. Oh! Arr! Wind! Water! Hot! Go! By your powers combined, I am Captain Planet! Captain Planet, he's our hero Gonna take pollution down to zero He's our powers, man The power is yours!